This program is rated PG. It contains themes and scenes which may not be suitable for very young audiences. Parental guidance is advised. Be advised that the views and opinions of the hosts and guests do not reflect those of the station. Every day is yours for the taking. There are adventures to be had. Challenges to face. And opportunities to do something great. That's why every detail of your room and every aspect of your experience is designed with one goal to help you make it happen at Marriott we believe a great hotel experience should do more than just help you face your day it should help you seize it we know the high standards you set for yourself we set them too and each day we aim to live up to every last one of them. From keeping you connected, to helping you relax. We do our best, so you can do your best. Because when you love what you do, you don't settle for less. You don't compromise. Instead, you seek out those you can rely on, who can help you do what you love in a way that's thoughtful and real. In life and in travel, it's invaluable to have people and places you can depend on. And we're glad to be one of those places. Right here at Marriott Hotels and Resorts. Welcome. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Philippines Uncut. I'm your host, Buddy Kunana. Now, in this show, we talk about everything in the sun. And tonight is once again about one of our favorite advocacies, tourism. And tonight, in the next uh, hour, we're going to talk about the latest trends in hospitality management. We're going to learn a lot about uh, the Marriott, which is the finest hotel in the Philippines and perhaps the world. And we're, go we're going to find out about how this hotel is not just a place to stay, but it's actually a hotel with a heart. So joining us to lead the discussion on hospitality trends and the Marriott is the general manager of Marriott Hotel Manila, Mr. Bruce Winter. Good evening, Bruce, and welcome to Philippines and Cut. It's a pleasure to have you here. Well, it's a pleasure to be here, buddy. Thank you. Yes, and uh, as I mentioned, you know, I love tourism and I love, you know, the, the hospital and management. And to have you in the show today to talk about your fine establishment is really a, a pleasure for us and, and, and a high honor. So let's talk about your background first, Bruce. Uh, tell us a bit about yourself. Well, I... I've been with the, the company for almost 25 years. Next July will be my 25th anniversary with Marriott. It's taken me around the world and uh, it's been a, a fulfilling journey. You know, I've, I've worked in the UK, I've worked in the States, I've worked in Korea, and now I've worked in the Philippines. So, um, 10 hotels over that time and, and, and rich experiences in, in every location. So, it's been an interesting, uh, it's been an interesting journey. You know, I originally am from Scotland and, um, you know, went to hotel school. Um, and the rest kind of took off from there. Now, how did you get started in, uh, in hotel work? Well, it, by, by luck, I suppose, or by chance, you know, I was a, a teenager, not really 100% clear on what I wanted to do. But I, do, I did know that I wanted to see the world. So my first choice was to join the Navy. <laughs> and my, my parents <laughs> said, that's fine, son, but, you know, make sure you have a plan B in case you change your mind. Because okay. I was only 17 years old. So I guess what, I finally changed my mind after going through the whole process. So... Uh, oh, I, so, I, so you were in the Navy? I was actually, I went to what they call the Admiralty Interview Board All right. uh, to join the British Royal Navy as an officer candidate and I got accepted and I was waiting to go and then I just panicked at the 
there was an eight and a half year minimum commitment and I suddenly thought, you know, maybe I'd be better off going to college <laughs> and it's a little bit more relaxed and, uh, and, and so on. So I, I had applied for college as well and I had chosen three uh, majors uh, as my option A, B, C and they were all related to travel in some way and one of them was hotel management and that was the one they accepted me for first. So I just snapped it up, took it and, and jumped in. So, but I mean, I knew I was going to like hotels because, uh, you know, in the few experiences I had had going on vacation as a teenager with, with my family and, you know, the hotel, it was exciting to be in a hotel. It was glamorous, people were having fun, it was interesting. And, uh, and I thought, you know, this is something I could enjoy. And I can tell you what, I, they say if you pick a job that you enjoy, you'll never work a day in your life. And I, and I, I like I'm, that, I like that. I think I'm testament to that at this point. I no, really I mean, that's enjoy lovely. it. If, if you love what you're doing, then it, it's not work, right? It's correct. Fun. Correct. And, and, you know, the hotel environment, people like going to hotels. You know, even if it's for a business meeting, you get in, you're out of the office, and now you're in a five-star, you know, a nice luxury environment. People enjoy that. So I work there every day. What's not to enjoy, you know? Yeah. And I mean, okay, what is it about hotel work that you find satisfying? Because it's also a lot of work, eh? It's also a lot of hard work. It's not, uh, it's not all glamorous. I mean, on the outside, it's all glamorous. It's a nice place, the ambiance. It's, it's, a perfect, uh, it's, a, it's almost a perfect world on the outside. Yeah. But there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes. Sure. So um, tell us, what, what is satisfying about hotel work for you? Well, it's the, uh, it's the variety. You know, there's, you know, no two days are ever the same. It's, the, it's not monotonous, for sure. Uh, then there's also the, you know, there's the, there's the glamour and the pizzazz of the whole thing, you know? I mean, there are many moving parts to the hotel business, and, you know, and some are less glamorous than others, but they all work together towards a common goal. And, and when, you know, when, when you see that common goal realized, it's a very rewarding feeling. And whether you were the engineer that set up the mechanics of the room, or you were the, the, the steward that, that washed the dishes at the end of the event, it doesn't matter. You, know, you, you were part of that, and you get to see it. You get to see what's happening. And you see a plan coming together. Yeah, you see a whole plan coming together. Lovely, and lovely. We've done some, you know, over the years, we've been involved in some major events, you know, but sometimes even the small ones you know, so, uh, are, are, are equally rewarding. And, um, and every hotel you work in is different. You, know, you do different scales of, of events, different level of events, different styles. And, 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 and as you said, it takes you around the world, and it puts you in touch with, in diff with different working environments, right? Like yeah. different cultures, different local cultures. And I, I assume that you said you've worked in the US, the UK, Korea, now the Philippines. Each place is a different place to work in. I mean, the, the people as well that you, that you have to work with, the local staff and yeah. the local yeah. hires. Yeah, and you know, in, in, in many ways, you know, there, there are obviously cultural differences in, 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 in the workplace and socially, and you know, you have to move and live in a country, but take your family with you. And then you're also working with, uh, with different, different folks and different cultures with different languages maybe and but you know s there's a there's an eerie familiarity about what you do as well you know the recipe for success doesn't change very much you know I, I'm, I'm very sensitive to you know uh, cultural awareness but at the end of the day there is a common denominator regardless of what country you're in you know and that's and that's having a respect for your fellow man and having a sense of humor and in any environment, in any culture, those things will help you survive in the hotel business. I can Very nice, you. especially here in the Philippines, you know, having I a sense of humor. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I Filipinos mean, love to smile and laugh, and then, you know, we like to take things, you know, a bit on the light side and not too seriously. So I guess uh, you fit quite well in the Philippines, and you've been here for about four years, going on yeah, five, right? Four and a half years so far, so three years in Cebu and a year and a half in Manila now, so enjoying it very much. What about the uh, difficulties of hotel work? I mean, uh, like, uh, for instance, I have some friends who, who were in, in the hotel business and some, and some of them told me the hours can be quite difficult or grueling. And so, um, what is your take on that? That's, that's not, never been a hardship for me, uh, to, to be honest, because as, as I say, you know, I think, um, I, I, maybe I went through the hardest part before I had <laughs> okay. kids, before I had a family. What is the hardest part? Well, the hardest part, I mean, you know, a lot of people don't survive the first 10 years of the hotel business. Why is that? Okay, it's because, <laughs> all right, oh, well, for all the glamour I just talked about, <laughs> sometimes you're shielded from the glamour during the first 10 years, you know, you're not quite in you're it. You're in the trenches. You know, you're in the <laughs> trenches. And I've been in the trenches. But I still enjoyed it, you know, okay. I, I enjoyed it, you know, and it was good, it was rewarding, it was, it was honest work, you know, and, you know, it, I think, well, I enjoyed it because I was also progressing. I was moving from one department to the next department. And, I mean, I worked every Christmas and every New Year. Wow. And, you well, know, you do the overnight stuff. shift and you do this, that, and the other. Over so, the holidays. And yeah. that's when you're supposed to turn your family, your friends, and you're away. You're so, at work, right? Yeah. So that's well, a difficult part of being in, in a hotel. Yeah. 
So the, yeah. hotel, the hotel becomes your world, actually. It becomes your social life. It becomes everything, you know, because all, you the, friends, all the friends you had in college that now have, like, normal jobs, as we call them. <laughs> yeah. uh, They've they got after-hours yeah. activities. So they say, what are you doing on Saturday night? Well, I'm working. So, well, we're all going out. When are you, you know, when are you off? I'm off when they're on working. Mo Monday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to do something on Monday afternoon? <laughs> they're all at work. Exactly. They're all at work. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So then, okay, I must hang out with hotel people on Monday <laughs> afternoon because they're the only ones that are not working. Now, okay, talk so. about the trenches. What do you mean by the trenches in the hotel business? I mean, yeah, what are well, the trenches? That, well, you know, those are the guys that open, open the doors at 5 mm. o'clock in the morning and, or look, close the doors at 3 o'clock in the morning, you know, or, you know, or actually work the entire overnight shift. Wow. Um, but, you know, if, if um, I, I can tell you that the housekeeper who cleans between 14 and 16 rooms a day is, is, is worthy of our respect, big time. For because sure. Because try doing that for a couple of days. <laughs> I no, tell you, it's back-breaking work. Absolutely, and, absolutely. And we, we have, you know, we've got so many people who've been doing it in our company for 30 years, the same job every day. Now, some would refer to that as in the trenches, and I mean no disrespect by that. I would have the, the utmost respect for that because somebody has to do that job. For Without sure. it, there are no hotels. Sure. So, sure. you know, it takes a special kind of person to be able to do that. And, you know, I, I, I know that I think in the long term I may, might not have been capable of doing that myself for 30 years, you know. I, I, I remember doing it for like five days when I, you know, I no, trained as a housekeeper. Difficult, when I, sure. when I, You know, I'd never worked in the rooms division. I was always in food and beverage. And, and then all of a sudden they were going to make me a director of operations and I had to very quickly <laughs> learn the room side of the business and spent five days in housekeeping. I was going home every night. <laughs> You know, my back was hurting, my legs were hurting, I was no, it's miserable. Tough, it's tough. Yeah. I yeah. couldn't eat dinner, just go straight to bed. It was just, you know, so that's what I mean by yeah. in the trenches. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, like, you know, like we, we, we've all had to make our beds and fix our rooms, and it's difficult for one room. Talk about someone, like, example, in, in, in your hotel, one person would, would service how many rooms on, let's say, on average? Maybe well, uh, 20 maybe rooms? or no, 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 less than that. Less less, than that. Yeah. There's, there's some industry standards, yeah, but yeah. it's somewhere between 14 and 16. It depends on, yeah. the, on the company, on the location, and on, yes, the, on, yes. on the environment. Or yeah. the, actually the brand of hotel. Yeah, you know, yeah. Certain brands have got larger bed sure. guest rooms. For sure. And there's only you know, eight hours in a shift or nine hours in a shift. So it depends on this, the allocation of the rooms. But now, you've been in the hotel business for 25 years. It's your first job out of college. And, and you were already working in the hotel business as, uh, in college as well because you were entered with, with, with the Marriott. Yep. And you were stuck with one company. And, and you know, I have to say that that is quite amazing because a lot of my, my friends in hotel business, they kind of move from one company to another. They get pirated. Now, um, I understand that this is part of the corporate culture of, of the Marriott. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, I think um, it's, it's fairly safe to say that, that Marriott's got one of the strongest cultures in, in the hospitality industry. And, um, you know, the, the average GM uh, has been with the company for 25 years. That's an average in our company. And wow. almost 60% of the general managers started in the trenches, like you, uh, in the front line, you know, as waiters, <laughs> bellmen, housekeepers, whatever, uh, which is really a testament to the, the, the core values of the company. Uh, you know, of course, like maybe several of our competitors, we also believe we're number one company. <laughs> yes. So we always, you know, we kind of think, hey, if you're already working for the best company, where else are you going to go? <laughs> right? It, it so, doesn't get any higher. Yeah, it doesn't exactly. get any better. And I mean, you know, I, I think it's an easy question for me to answer. Like, why have I stuck with one company? Well, I've worked in 10 hotels and you know, three continents, four different countries. So I, I have variety and I have progress and I have, you know, uh, I've had a colorful and rich career. So th with all of those things said, there's, there's, there's no reason to leave. But, yeah, yeah. but I think more importantly is um, I always equate it to my own personal values. And, you know, I think people are happy in a job if they feel that their own personal values match and are similar to the company's values that they're working for. It's when you have this difference in, 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 the, in the value set. That's when you don't you enjoy know, yourself. It's like, you know, why, yeah. did the why did the company make this decision? I wouldn't make that decision. When you start coming across, that's a, that's a, di a difference in values. Uh, whereas I, I believe strongly in the values of our company. I think so very people-oriented, huh? Yeah, very, very people-oriented. The, the number one core value is to put people first. Very nice, uh, very another nice. Another one is to act with integrity, which mm -hmm. is very important. And, um, you know, with, with these things, it's been, it's been a very easy decision. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's nice to know that you mentioned that, uh, you know, 60% of your GMs actually started as waiters, bellboys, I mean, bellhops and, and that kind of thing. And it just goes to show that this company, people in management position, are aware of what goes on down below. I mean, like, you guys have gone through the rank, so to speak, right, from, from private all the yeah. way to general. Absolutely. I think, you know, that, that is the heart of the hotel. That's where it all happens. That's where success is defined uh, or, or lost. And you have to be in touch with that. You have to stay connected to that. So... You know, I, I spend 
it, it's tough. There's challenges in today's business environment with all the things that we're required to do, technology-driven assignments and other things that go on <laughs> that never used to be there. But uh, We must evolve. <laughs> however, I, I do really try hard to dedicate as much time as possible every day to just the age-old adage of management by walking around. And, and if you just walk around and you're, you're, you're talking to people, you're listening to people, uh, you're connecting with your staff, I think that that's this, the key to a successful hotel. I think at the end of the day, being a consumer, you know, I'm not in the hotel business, but as a consumer, as a, as a client, you know, I mean, uh, we like to look at a hotel as a home away from home. And what you said, like connecting with the staff, keeping it people to people, very people oriented, this is what a home is all about, right? I mean, you know, Absolutely. just keeping it, you know, keeping it very comfortable and very secure and just comfortable and familiar. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, our... our our, our service philosophy is very much, you know, just a kind of, you know, you treat people as if you are welcoming, welcoming, welcoming them into your own home, you know, I mean, that's, it's, it's not rocket science, yeah. you know, you can, you, you can't, you know, there's lots of minutia and details that go into the different aspects of the service, but at the end of the day, people just want genuine care. For sure. You know, just want it to be genuine, you know, For it sure. doesn't have to be too stiff or too ultra luxury. It just wants, you know, it really needs to be genuine. So now, how does Marriott indoctrinate its, 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 its staff and its, its managers, its officers? How do you get this, how do you get the corporate culture, you know, really instilled, ingrained in people in your company? Um, the success there is simply put, hire the right people. Okay. And then you don't have to indoctrinate <laughs> okay. them. You don't have to train them all because okay. they have this genuine yes. care principle within their core values, their personal values. So. You know, we spend a, a great deal of effort making sure we hire the right people. I, I, that, that I couldn't place any more emphasis on how important that part is. Yeah. Because then the rest is easy because, you know, if, if somebody doesn't have it in them, innate in them, it's very difficult to train them. You can have the best training programs in the world, but you'll... But it's, if it's not that, there... They'll still be that type of person and not that type of person. Good or bad, it's just we need, we were, we're looking for a very specific type of person to work in our hotels. How is it like working with Filipinos? I mean, you've been here four years, four and a half, and uh, you've been in Cebu. You were the GM in Cebu, and now you're, you're in the GM in Marriott Hotel Manila. I mean, how has it uh, been so far? What do you like most about working with uh, Filipinos? Well, just, just their absolute desire to, to take care of people. You know, it's innate in the culture. So we, we've got a head start. And, and in fact, isn't this where most of the world comes to hire people? <laughs> you know, whether it be the cruise ships <laughs> sure, or sure. other countries where they really struggle to find to, to find good people, uh, they come to the Philippines, and you know to, to, to finally be here to see where it all where, where where this stems from. Where does this hospitality culture that's innate in Filipinos? Where does it come from? And understand the culture, you you, you see how things are things are pretty special. It know? is. I mean, I mean, Filipinos are very hospitable, really, by nature, by character, and uh, I, it's, it's so nice to see it coming together and gelling. Yeah. In, in, in Marriott? Well, we have, you know, we, have, we do have robust training programs. We do have robust standards. I mean, we have all of these things. Don't let me down and play that for a moment. Uh, but when you couple that with this natural hospitality, it's a great cocktail for success. It really is. Uh, so, you know, I'm very proud to say that in, in, the, in the Marriott Hotel brand, our hotel has been number one in staff service for the entire duration of this year in, in Asia Pacific. Really? Yeah. And so Marriott Hotel so Manila is, 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 is number one, is, is number one number in Asia Pacific. And number That's one in amazing. Asia Pacific for the Marriott That's brand. Amazing. How big are you guys service. over, uh, how, how, spread are, how spread out are you over the, the Asia Pacific region? Well, in, in Asia Pacific, across all of the different Marriott brands at the moment, it's very difficult to keep up because we're opening hotels at a prolific pace. But it's somewhere around 165 hotels today, maybe wow. different tomorrow. Okay, wow. Just in Asia. And that's across all the brands. Um, but we, we look to grow to 330 by the end of 2016. Wow, that's so an amazing, that's a double. Yeah. Double in, in, in uh, less than two years. In Asia. Yeah, yeah, so yeah that's but amazing. We're, to, we're almost 4,000 hotels now in 74 countries. And as a Filipino, I'm proud, it makes me proud to, to know that we are number one in 165 hotels across the Asia Pacific region. Well, I, I, I should clarify that. <laughs> we, we do have different brands. Oh, yeah, this, um, which we'll talk about in the yeah, second segment. And, but um, Bruce, we got to pause for a break, unfortunately. Sure, no problem. But guys, more of Hotel Trends with uh, Bruce Winton of uh, Marriott Hotel Manila when Philippines Uncut returns.